They are sumptuous and rare, can only be grown underground in areas with a Mediterranean climate. And they're one of the most expensive delicacies in the world. Now a South African farmer has perfected the science of growing truffles. Truffles, which have a nutty, garlicky, earthy taste, are in high demand around the world. Their unique aroma can turn any dish into an unforgettable gourmet taste experience. This odd-looking fungus is one of the most expensive delicacies in the world, trading for around 30,000 rands a kilo. The story of how it eventually ends up on your plate is filled with magic and mystique. Truffles are the fruiting body of a fungus and found in the top 30 centimeters of the soil, attached to the roots of a host tree, normally oaks. Top French chef Christophe de Hoss is a connoisseur in the world of truffles. There is a mystic side to it because it's not easy to grow. It's a, in French we say envoûtant. It's, a, it's fascinating, I think, the flavor and the smell. It's really what it is. Truffles are found in Mediterranean climates. In Europe, they are prominent in Spain, Italy, and France, and grown in cultivated truffle orchards or found naturally in the forests. But not all trees produce them, and so sniffer dogs are trained to pick up their aroma during a short season of about two months in winter. There are reports that competition amongst truffle hunters is so fierce that some sniffer dogs have been poisoned by rivals. This is a well-known truffle market in France where they are sold to truffle dealers. There are different varieties. Most expensive is the white truffle, followed by the black winter truffle. We have a Mediterranean climate in some parts of South Africa, but not many people will know that we already have a small truffle industry. And at the forefront of that industry is a man known as the truffle guru of South Africa. And that's Volker Muros, who set up the Truffle Lodge on his farm Grundfontein in the southern Cedarburg. Does that title sit well with you? Well, it took a long time to get to that title, I suppose. <laughs> a lot of studying, a lot of errors that we made on the farm. But I'm quite proud of it, actually. Volker grew up in Germany, and as a child, he loved to forage for mushrooms. Bolitas, uh, pine rings, all sorts of stuff was collected and put into the Sunday gravy, the Sunday roast, and that's a memory that sticks with you forever, that flavor. Volker and his family, who escaped to Austria just prior to World War II, later arrived in Cape Town after the war. He carved out a successful career as a filmmaker and food photographer. On assignment in Namibia, he photographed the Kalahari truffle, which grows in the wild, called the Nava. And it obviously interested me, the mushroom. Hey, if it grows in the Kalahari, let's see if we can grow it on Kudfontein. He spent several years perfecting the science on how to successfully cultivate truffles in South Africa. To date, he's planted 22 hectares of oaks on his farm, all inoculated with a black winter truffle spore. Volker's son, Paul, who heads up marketing, says that once acorns start germinating in their nurseries, inoculation takes place. We basically take truffles that we've imported from Italy and we mash them up into a liquid. We add some secret ingredients and we put them on the, on the roots and the nature does the rest. Batch checks are performed to determine if the fungus is attached to the roots. Woodford truffles are in partnership with a small group of farmers and supplied them with over 60,000 inoculated saplings. You know, it was a, almost a, a hobby, if you like, initially, until I started getting into it and started learning it and actually started spending some time with other truffle farmers. Um, then it actually started becoming feeling, felt more realistic. Volker and his team helped to set up businessman Gerald Breyer's farm in Tulbach in 2016. Up to now, have you eaten one of your homegrown truffles? From fellow farmers, but not my own yet. Yeah, that'll be a, uh, there's a bottle of Moe sitting in the fridge waiting for that to happen. <laughs> Gerald is expecting his first yield next year. Truffles are so expensive because they are hard to find naturally. It can take between four and seven years before a farmer can expect a first harvest in winter. They also have a sell-by date, which means that after being unearthed, they need to be refrigerated, cleaned, packaged, and flown to a destination, 
and eaten within 21 days. When I told my wife I was doing a story on truffles, she said, oh, we've got some truffle oil in the pantry. It was well, cheap. Truffle oil is a synthetic. It's one of our biggest problems where people are starting to get so used to that as a taste or as a smell and aroma. It doesn't actually taste anything like the real thing. I've never savoured a truffle in my life. It's probably just outside of a journalist's budget. But Chef Christoph is preparing some very special truffle dishes for us. And while he's plying his trade, we're going to meet some of the most important members of the team, Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde have been trained by Trevor and Marden Norris to find these treasures. Truffle season in South Africa is in winter, so truffles were imported for a demonstration. Right, now we're going to hide a truffle. There it is. And my main duty is to make sure that uh, the dogs aren't looking. About 100 meters away, Paul buried a truffle. A well-trained dog like Bonnie is able to detect the ripening truffle aroma and will then lead its owner to the jackpot. Bonnie aced it. Any dog that has the capacity for training can be used. Back in the kitchen, Christoph had prepared some truffle dishes for us. He grated about 600 rands worth of truffles onto these two simple pasta dishes. Time to experience the magic. Quite um, delicious. Merci. Hmm. <laughs> Otherwise, um, I'd say buy a lecker, but uh, very expensive as well. But really, it's, mm. it's unique. In the meantime, something remarkable is happening in a laboratory in Pretoria at a company called Dagutat, where we received a warm welcome. Its core business is producing biological products for crop protection. But in 2017, a new challenge presented itself to Helga Dagutat and Nita Breitenbach. When me, me and Nita went for business to Europe, and we come across the truffles, and I say, well, in Afrikaans, we, I say, bliksem nita, let's try this. <laughs> and uh, we just started with the idea, and um, we think in a, another direction, and uh, start growing the like truffles. Like Mythbusters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The truffles grow in moss chambers, but their methods remain top secret. What was it like when you produced your first truffle in the lab? So, Derek, to be honest, we have drank a lot of champagne every time we have our truffles. And we've worked very hard to make the growth moss chambers um, productive as we um, want to go commercially with the truffles. To date, they've produced 70 truffles, including the much sought after white truffle. So we didn't get to hear about the science or even get a peek at the equipment, but we are getting to taste a lab truffle. Definitely a very attractive, um, um, pleasing taste and aroma. Mm. But Christoph prefers them to be grown in the traditional way. So no lab truffles for you? No. <laughs> There's no way. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Helga and Nita say that chefs have applauded their truffles, and when in full production, they'll be able to produce all year round. They also don't plan to undercut the current price of truffles. Meanwhile, back at the lodge, Fulker says that aspirant truffle farmers need to be passionate and have perseverance. It takes a lot of money to get a farm into production stage. Eventually, yes, it makes money and you make your money back, but you have to have that money to set up that farm correctly. Otherwise, no go. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.